Tour of Flanders A Tour of Flanders Dutch, Rond van Vlaanderen, also known as de Rond the Tour, is an annual road cycling race held in Belgium every spring. The most important cycling race in Flanders, it is part of the UCI World Tour and organized by Flanders Classics. Its nickname is Vlaanderen's Moïse Dutch for Flanders' finest. First held in 1913, the Tour of Flanders had its 100th edition in 2016. Today it is one of the five monuments of cycling, together with Milan San Remo, Paris Raubex, Liege Bastogne Liege, and the Giro di Lombardia. It is one of the two major cobbled classics, anticipating Paris Raubex, which is on the calendar one week after the Tour of Flanders. The event had its only interruptions during World War Ion has been organized without hiatus since 1919, the longest uninterrupted streak of any cycling classic. Six men hold the record of most victories, making the Tour of Flanders unique among the major classics. Belgians Achille Bice, Eric Lemon, Johan Musio, and Tom Boonen, Italian Fiorenzo Magni, and Swiss Fabian Cancellara each have three victories. Since 2004, a women's race, the Tour of Flanders for Women is organized annually on the same day as the men's, but on a shorter distance. Creation The Rond as a regional symbol The Tour of Flanders was conceived in 1913 by Leon van den Haut, co-founder of the sports newspaper Sportworld. In the era it was customary for publishers of newspapers and magazines to organize cycling races as a means of promoting circulation. By the beginning of the 20th century, cycling was in a poor state in Belgium. Velodromes were closing and national championships on the road or track were no longer organized. The one major Belgian race, Liege Bastogne Liege, was in the French-speaking South. As the gloom increased, Adal de Frey became the first Belgian winner of the Tour de France in 1912. He was a 20-year-old Fleming and, although he rode for Alcyon, a French team, he symbolized a potential rise for Belgian cycling. Dufresne's victory inspired Auguste de Meet, mayor of Hal and director of the press group Societe Belge d'Imprimerie, to publish a Dutch-language sports magazine called Sportwereld. Sportwereld's most prominent cycling writer was Carol van Wayne and Dale, a young sports journalist and passionate cycling fan who had tried cycle racing himself. The first issue appeared in time for the Championship of Flanders on 12 September 1912. Van Dale became the editor of Sportwereld on 1 January 1913. The Rond and Flemish Nationalism Much has been written about the link between cycling in Flanders and Flemish nationalism. Van Dale wanted to create a race run entirely on Flemish soil, crossing as many cities as possible, because all Flemish cities had to contribute to the liberation of the Flemish people. The Tour of Flanders is the only classic to have been held on German, occupied territory during the Second World War, and in full agreement with the German command. The Germans not only allowed and enjoyed the race, but helped police the route as well. This led to accusations of collaboration in an age where many Flemish nationalists had strong ties with Nazi Germany. After the war, De Standard and Het Algemeen Neos Sportwereld were sequestered by the state and several journalists, largely non-sports reporters, were sentenced for collaboration. Van Wijnendale was forbidden to work as a journalist for life a ban lifted when he produced a letter of support from General Montgomery, confirming that he had hidden down British pilots during the war and had protected them in his house. A rival Flemish newspaper, Het Volk, started the Omloop van Vlaanderen in 1945. Het Valk, a left-wing publication, wanted to initiate a new cycling event in Flanders as a rival race to what it saw as the Rond's closeness to the Nazis. The Rond's organizers protested that the name was too close to their own in Dutch. There is little difference between Rond and Omloop. The Belgian Cycling Federation demanded that Het Valk change the name of their event. That race became the Omloop Het Valk, nowadays the opening race of the Belgian cycling season. History The first races 
On 25 May 1913, Carol Van Wijnendale organized the first tour of Flanders, crossing the two western provinces of Flanders. It started at 6 in the morning in Ghent and finished in Mariakirk, now a suburb of Ghent. It covered 330 kilometers, 210 mi, all on bad roads with just the occasional cycle path. The race finished on a wooden velodrome that circled a pond in Mariakirk where ticket sales covered only half the prizes. The first race in 1913 was won by 25-year-old Paul DeMann, who won the sprint of a six-man group after more than 12 hours in the saddle. DeMann went on to win Bordeaux, Paris in 1914, but his career almost ended with World War I. He joined Belgium's espionage underground war effort and smuggled documents into the neutral Netherlands by bike. After many trips, he was arrested by the Germans, jailed in Leuven, and held for execution. The armistice of 1918 saved his life, and he became a war hero. The first race consisted of 37 riders, followed by five assistance cars. In 1914, the field was 47, and the organization still struggled to find enough financial resources. A disappointed Van Wijnendale later said, Sportwereld was so young and so small for the big rond that we wanted. We had bitten off more than we could chew. It was hard, seeing a band of second-class riders riding across Flanders, scraping up a handful of centims to help cover the costs. The same happened in 1914. No Van Hawert, no Masselies, no De Frey, no Mossen, no Machiet no Van den Berg, all forbidden to take part by their French bike companies. However, there were hints of the growing status of the race as a symbol of Flemish nationalism see above. Marcel Bais, one of Flanders' cycling icons in the early 20th century, insisted on entering the race against the order of his French Alcine team that forbade Belgian riders to participate. Bais took part in the second edition in 1914 as one of the favorites and won the sprint of a group of six on the velodrome of Evergem in the vicinity of Ghent. The distance was scaled back to 264 kilometers, 164 mi. 1920s, birth of a legend. The tour of Flanders was interrupted for the duration of World War I and was resumed again without interruptions as from 1919. The interwar editions were marked by appalling road conditions and grisly landscapes in war-ridden Flanders, but the Tour of Flanders gained popularity fast. In the 1920s, Flemish track specialists dominated the race. Gerard de Beets, a specialist of six-day racing in the American circuit, won the race twice, in 1924 as one of only 17 finishers in dreadful weather conditions. Swiss Airy Suter became the first foreign winner in 1923, and achieved the first ever cobbled races double win with Paris Rabix one week later. In 1926, a group of ten sprinted to the finish. Five of them crashed heavily, and Denny's Verstuuren, competing in his first race as a professional, won the event. The start and finish of the race in Ghent started to attract hordes of fans, and by the end of the 1920s, the Rond had become the pinnacle of the cycling season in Flanders. 1930s Problems of Success If the first Rons were held to limited public success, by the 1930s its popularity had grown so spectacularly that vast masses of spectators along the roads and cars following the race had turned the Tour of Flanders into a true cultural festival. By 1933, there were 164 participants and seven times as many cars and motorbikes in the race caravan. This booming of the event brought inevitable problems of safety. In 1937, writer and Flemish literary icon Stein Stuvels wrote to Sporporel that the Rond, as seen from his house in Inguijum, was more a procession of cars than of riders. Race director Carol Van Wijnendale spoke of a wild rodeo of spectators driving behind the race and seeking shortcuts across the course to see the race several times. He claimed the police estimated the crowd for early races at 500,000. People followed the race in cars, overtook it when they could, or stood so thick by the roadside in villages and at control points that the riders sometimes had trouble passing. 
In 1933, Van Wijnendale involved the gendarmerie to control the plague of race followers as much as possible, but to limited effect. The 1937 race was exceptionally chaotic with several accidents, causing race organizers to have the entire course secured by motorized police, in those days a revolutionary move. From then, the situation started to improve somewhat. In sporting terms, the race grew more international with participants from France, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and Czechoslovakia. Belgians continued to dominate, however, and Romain Jaisels became the first to win two consecutive rounds. The editions of 1934 and 1935 were exceptionally rainy, making the races grueling contests of perseverance. Conditions for Riders The Ronde, in its first decades, followed the general rule that each racer was responsible for his own problems. Help from others was banned and riders carried spare tires looped round their shoulders to cope with punctures. It could take two or three minutes to change and inflate a tire longer if it was cold or there were other problems. Tires weighed around 500 compared to currently around 200. A rim or any other part of the bike that broke spelled the end of the race and still left the rider with the problem of getting to the finish. Conditions improved in the 1930s and riders were allowed to accept a rain jacket, a spare tire and a pump, but only in an emergency and at the judge's discretion. A change of bike was allowed only if a frame, wheel or handlebar broke, but riders were still expected to ride with spare tires and a pump. Riders in the 1940s had to hand their bikes to officials the day before the race to have them identified with a lead seal later with a ring similar to that fitted to racing pigeons. In that way, the judges or commissaires could see if a rider had illegally changed bikes. The Ronde moved towards modern rules in 1951, with riders being allowed limited help from team cars and to combine with others from the same team on the road. By 1955, it was possible to accept a replacement bike from a teammate, but not from a car. The rules changed from year to year until they resembled those of today by the end of the 1950s. Praises Praises for the first race in 1913 came to 1,100 Belgian francs. By 1935, the fees and bonuses had increased to 12,500 francs, with 2,500 for the winner down to 125 francs for the 19th place finisher at a time when a newspaper cost 40 cents. In 1938, there was a bonus of 100 francs for any rider who had a lead of 30 minutes. Freezes during the war years were whatever the organizers could find, including boxes of razors, a stove, bottles of wine, and cycling equipment. There were 100 francs in 1948 for the last rider to reach the finish in Eclo. The last four riders in 1949 were given bottles of massage oil. 1940s War Years and Resurrection In 1939, as World War Roman II loomed, organizing magazine Sport World merged with Het Neo Splad, a popular daily newspaper. During the war, many sporting events were cancelled, but the Tour of Flanders continued to be organized in agreement with the German command. The first wartime race in 1941 was won by Achille Weiss. Because of road restrictions, the course was altered to poorly surfaced roads and paths, starting and finishing in Ghent and totaling just 198 km 123 mi. Despite the war conditions, the 1940s were the remarkable scene of some of the race's most famous champions. Achille Weiss became the first rider to win three times. Rick Scott and Rick Van Steenbergen gained two victories and became the leading figures of Belgian cycling. Scott linked his name indelibly to the race with two victories, 20 starts, eight podium finishes, and several memorable exploits. In 1944, young Rick Van Steenbergen controlled the race, distanced his rival Breek Scott in the final kilometers, and stunned followers by becoming the youngest winner ever at 19. In 1948, the Tour of Flanders was included in the first running of the Challenge de Grange Colombo, cycling's first international season-long competition, 
which had spurred its status as an international event. Until the Second World War, the Tour of Flanders had been held on the same day as Milan San Remo, Italy's biggest cycling classic. Prominent Italian and French riders preferred the latter, which explains why there was only a single non-Belgian winner before the war. The organizers changed the date to meet the needs of the challenge Disgrange Colombo. The 1948 edition featured a record 265 participants, of which 50 non-Belgians, the largest Palatin ever to take the start. Rick Scott won his second round. 1950s International Classic Italian Fiorenzo Magni was the first exponent of the internationalization. The Tuscan achieved an unprecedented three consecutive victories in just four participations. The tours of 1950 and 1951 set the tone, with solo wins by the Italian in cold weather. In 1951, Magni attacked with 75 km 47 mile to go and finished 535 ahead of Frenchman Bernard Gauthier. In 1955, cycling great Louis and Bobbitt, by then a two times winner of the Tour de France, became the first French winner. Another Frenchman, Jean Forestier, won the following year. Flemish fans needed to get used to the many foreign riders excelling in Flanders but the international prestige of the race increased fast. 1960s, ever-growing popularity. In 1961, Tom Simpson became the first British winner in a controversial two-man sprint against Italian Nino De Filippis. De Filippis was the faster sprinter, but stopped pedaling too early because a finishing banner had been blown away and was foiled by Simpson. The influence of spectators never ended. Crowds stood in huge masses along the roads and the finish was moved to Gentbrug in order to cope with the ever-growing number of spectators. Rick Van Louis took his second win in 1962 as world champion amid hordes of fans, securing his status as flag-bearer of Belgian cycling. In 1969, the young Eddie Merckx, on his way to becoming a cycling legend, took over this role when he broke clear from the pack with 73 km 45 mi to go. In bad weather and despite objection from his team manager, he maintained his effort and won the race 536 ahead of Felis Gimondi, the biggest margin ever. 1970s Controversies and Doping In the 1970s the Tour of Flanders needed a new identity. The asphalting of many of the traditional roads and hills made the race less demanding, and more riders were able to keep up with the best. Eric Lemon became the local hero when he won three times in four years, thereby equaling Bice and Magny's record. Sprint specialist Lemon outsprinted Eddie Merckx as part of a select group on each of his wins, much to the discontent of fans and organizers. In order to preserve the Ron's specific character, Organizers increased the number of hills and searched for more backroads in the Flemish Ardennes. In 1973, the finish was moved to Meerbeck, not far after the Mar of Gerardsbergen, which became an iconic climb of the race and of Belgian cycling. Three years later, the controversial Koppenberg was included. It marked the beginning of some sensational editions of the race. In 1975, Eddie Merckx concluded his second win after another memorable raid to the finish. Merckx, in the rainbow jersey, escaped from the peloton together with Franz Verbeek with 104 km 65 mi to ride, before distancing his worn-out companion 6 km 3.7 mi before Meerbeck. In 1976, Freddie Mertens and Roger de Vlemink, two of Belgium's star riders, were part of a five-man group, and favorites to win the sprint, but the two did not get on and let themselves jointly be dropped at 4 km 2.5 mi from the finish. De Vlemink beat Mertens for fourth place, acknowledging his mistake, but stated that he did not want Mertens to win. In 1977, their rivalry culminated in what became a peculiar race. Mertens punctured on the Koppenberg and was given a wheel by a spectator who pushed him all the way up. De Vlemink broke clear, but punctured shortly after, and was caught by a returning Mertens. As both riders were alone at the front of the race, De Vlemink refused to work. 
for 70 km 43 my Mertens rode to the finish with de Vlemink on his wheel and was easily beaten by the latter in a two-man sprint it was de Vlemink's only win to this day both protagonists make contradictory statements about what happened Mertens stated that the judges had told him he would be disqualified for his illegal wheel change and that de Vlemink had offered him 300.0 francs to keep riding. De Vlemink denies this, saying that he tactically stayed on Merton's wheel whom he considered the better sprinter. After the race, the controversy heightened even more, when Merton's and third-place finisher Walter Plankier tested positive for doping and were both disqualified. 1980s, Dutch and Belgians The 1980s were monopolized by Dutch and Belgian riders. Dutchman Jan Ros won twice, and in 1986 Adrie van der Poel concluded the fifth win in seven years by a Dutch rider. Van der Poel beat Ireland's Sean Kelly and Canadian Steve Bohr in a four-man sprint. However, the decade will forever be remembered for the apocalyptic edition of 1985, won by Eric van der Raarden. The 23-year-old Belgian suffered a broken wheel before the Koppenberg, but returned to the front of the race in a group with Henny Kuiper, Greg Lemend, and his teammate Phil Anderson. Van der Raarden, considered a sprinter, attacked on the Mar of Gerardsbergen and rounded off a 20 km 12 my solo break. The race gained a place in cycling legend because a severe storm broke out in the second half of the race, with strong winds and torrential rainfall ravaging the peloton. Only 24 of 174 starters finished the race, the lowest number in modern times. In 1987, Claude Criquillion became the first French-speaking Belgian winner, with an attack after the Bosberg, thereby relegating Sean Kelly to second place again. Classics specialist Kelly finished second on three occasions, but the Ronde remained the only monument classic he never won. 1990s, Lion of Flanders. In 1989, the race was included in the first UCI Road World Cup, a season-long competition comprising the ten most important one-day cycling events. More riders specialized in the classics, with the Tour of Flanders scheduled as the first of the April classics. In 1993, Belgian Johan Musia won the race in a two-man sprint with Franz Massen and began to dominate the race for years. Meanwhile, the Italian classics specialists were also keen on winning the race, with Morno Argentin, Gianni Bugno, and Michel Bartali each taking one win. In 1994, Bugno beat Musio by 7 mm 0.28 in, in a four man sprint, the smallest margin in history. The next day, Flemish newspaper Het Lots Neos put the photo finish on its cover, accompanied by the headline The Sorrow of Flanders. Nonetheless, Musio dominated the race for a decade, with a series of eight podium finishes and three victories. The Flemish media awarded him the highest possible nickname, the Lion of Flanders. 21st Century Monument Race Classic riders Gianluca Bortolami and Andrea Taffy continued an Italian tradition with victories in the early 2000s. In 2005, the race was included in the inaugural UCI Pro Tour and in 2011 in its successor, the World Tour, so establishing its status as one of the five monuments on the cycling calendar. Tom Boonen became the new star of Belgian cycling with two consecutive victories. In 2010, Boonen, seeking his third win, attacked with Fabian Cancellar 45 came 28 my from the finish. Boonen was favorite to win, but could not keep up with Cancellara's high-paced attack on the Mar van Gerardsbergen. The Swiss time trial specialist powered on in the final 16 km 9.9 my to his first win. In 2011, the Tour of Flanders was taken over by Flanders Classics, which owns most of the Flemish classic races. In their first decision, the new organizers restyled the race and moved the finish to Audenard in 2012. The edition saw Tom Boonen taking his third and final win in a three-man sprint against Italians Ballin and Pizzotto. The two following years were again dominated by Fabian Cancellara, who based his wins on attacks on the Outquermont. In 2015, both Boonen and Cancellara were unable to participate because of injuries, 
and Alexander Kristoff became the first Norwegian winner of the race. In 2016, the Tour of Flanders celebrated its 100th edition, anticipated by a highly mediatized promotional campaign. The edition was won by Peter Sagan, who confirmed his status as the new foremost classics rider in the peloton. The 2020 Tour of Flanders was postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Route Present course Since 2017, the Tour of Flanders starts in the city of Antwerp. Following a flat run-in of 100 km 62 mi during which the race passes the towns of St. Nicholas, Alst, Sotegem, and passes the Padestrat, the racers reach the town of Audenard with the Centrum Rond van Vlaanderen and shortly thereafter the village of Brookham, where the decisive part of the race starts. Since 2012, the latter part of the race consists of three loops in the Flemish Ardens with a finish in Audenard. These take place in the southern part of East Flanders, with short forays into the provinces of West Flanders and Hainaut. These loops consist of a succession of hills Hellingen and a few flat sections of cobbled roads which determine the nature of the race. The hills offer many opportunities to attack and are usually the decisive sites of the race. These climbs are notorious for being short but very steep, and most of them but not all are cobbled. Most of the climbs are located in a relatively small area, causing the roads to turn constantly and often abruptly, which explains the winding and irregular trajectory of the finale. The Oud Quermont is the first and longest climb at 2.2 km 1.4 mi, an atypical hill, because it is not very steep, but considered one of the most arduous climbs in Flanders because of its length and cobbled surface. The steepest of all is the fully cobbled Koppenberg, 600 meters 2,000 ft in length with grueling stretches of 22% over a poorly paved narrow road. The last two climbs of the race, the Oud Quermont and the Paterberg, are both tackled twice in a finishing circuit. During the last loop, the Oud Quermont comes at 16 km 9.9 mi from the finish, and the Paterberg at 13 km 8.1 mi, often marking the decisive sights of the race. After the Paterberg comes a flat run in towards the finish, totaling C. 265 km 165 mi. Course changes. Like most of cycling's classics, the route has developed considerably over the years, but it has always been run in the provinces of East Flanders and West Flanders. In the first 30 years, the race was run from Ghent to Ghent, although the location of the finish in Ghent changed every few years. The first edition of 1913 headed eastward to St. Nicholas before following a clockwise circle through Alst, Audenard, Courtrake, viewing all the way to the seashore in Ostend and via Roselaire back to Ghent. This course visited all the major cities of the two western provinces of Flanders. The course of 1914 was similar, but without the leg to the coast. In 1919 the direction switched to a counterclockwise course, turning south in Bruges. In 1920 the route extended to the coast again, heading out past Bruges to run along the North Sea from Blankenberge to Ostend. The general route remained this way until 1938. Race director Carol Van Wayne insisted on including the coast to the course because of his sentimental vision of Flanders. The stretches of road along the sea were often accompanied by strong winds that inhibited attacks but scattered the peloton and spelled the end for those left behind the shelter of the main pack. Turning left at the sea meant that the wind blew from the side, producing a diagonal line of riders each sheltering the other, typical of the Ronde and other Flemish races. The passage along the coast was removed when war broke out in Europe, as access to the sea was restricted. The wartime route was a loop through the interior of Flanders, but in 1946 the race returned to its pre-war route. In 1952, the ride along the coast was abandoned for nine years, then returned in 1961, only to disappear again in 1964. In 1973, the race had a new finish in Meerbeck for the first time since its inception, that the finish was outside the vicinity of Ghent. The race was no longer a loop and the new finish was much closer to the hill zone, 
offering opportunities to include new climbs in the course finale. The Mar van der Rardsbergen, with gradients touching 20% and its top at 16 km 9.9 mi from the finish, was often the site where protagonists launched their decisive attacks. From 1973 to 2011, the Mar constituted a pairing with the Bosberg, the final climb, at 11 km 6.8 mi from the finish. The steep Mar in the center of Gerardsbergen, with its prominent chapel at the top, became one of the iconic sites of Belgian cycling and cycling in general. In 1998 the start moved to Bruges, making a seaside passage possible again, but preserving the traditional finale over the Mar and Bosberg. In 2012, the finish was changed to Audenard, 30 km 19 mi to the west of Gerardsbergen, thereby excluding both the Mar and Bosberg from the race course. The final climbs are since then out Quermont and Paterburg. In 2017 the start was moved to Antwerp for the next five years, and the Mar was placed back on the route, which still finished in Audenard. It remained in the race in the 2018 edition, with the climb beginning 170 km 110 mi into the race and finishing with 100 km 62 mi remaining. Start Locations The Tour of Flanders has started in four different cities Ghent, St. Nicolas, Bruges and Antwerp. The start of the inaugural event in 1913 was on the car and marked in Ghent's historic city centre. Ghent, the largest city of East and West Flanders, hosted the 1913 World's Fair at the time of the race. Later the official start in Ghent moved to the fashionable Albert Hotel, close to St. Pieter's Station, where riders signed on. Until the 1950s a Sunday Mass was held for riders before the start, as the race was often held just before the Holy Week or on Easter Day. In 1977 St. Nicholas replaced Ghent as the starting location of the race, mainly because it had more space to accommodate the growing number of spectators on its large market square. Race briefings were held in the monumental city hall. By 1988, the start had grown into a highly mediatized two-day event, with a spectacle presented by Flemish television on the evening of the race. In 1998 the start of the Tour of Flanders moved to Bruges, a UNESCO World Heritage Site known for its illustrious history and medieval architecture, as part of the city's promotional campaign. The move from St. Nicholas to Bruges brought criticism, unrelated to the route change. Until then it had been a tradition that spectators could mix and meet with riders before the start. Nonetheless, most Flemish fans and traditionalists were enthusiastic of the new starting place, praising Bruges' historic site and its closeness to the coast, which made it possible again for the race to pass by the seashore. As from 2017, the start of the race is in Antwerp, Flanders' largest city. The move will mark the first time the race passes through the province of Antwerp, as well as the first start outside the historical county of Flanders. The change was considered revolutionary, and the decision caused great division among Flemish cycling fans. Finish Locations The finish in 1913 was on the velodrome of Mariakirk, part of Greater Ghent, but failed to have the aspired success. It moved in 1914 to the Dees Porter Velodrome in neighboring Evergem, where Van Wayneendale recounted tongue-in-cheek. There were a good 20 spectators more than the previous year. Wetteren hosted the finish from 1928 until 1961, with some interruptions during World War Roman II when it was moved to Ghent. Firenzo Magni won his three tours of Flanders in Wetteren city center. From 1962 to 1972, the finish was in a residential neighborhood in nearby Gentbrug, on the outskirts of Ghent. From 1973 to 2011, the finish was in Meerbeek, part of the municipality of Ninov, some 20 km 12 mi west of Brussels. For 39 years, the race finished on the house's team wag, with a finishing straight of 400 and 1300 ft going slightly uphill in the final meters. In September 2011, it was announced that Audenard would be the new host city to finish the Tour of Flanders, thereby ending a 39-year tradition of finishing in Meerbeck.
The new arrival was part of a restyling of the race by new organizer Flanders Classics, which also saw the introduction of loops in the course. Many fans and followers were upset with the altered race finale, and the organization's decision was met with resistance. Start and finish and finish. Race characteristics. Nature of the race. The Tour of Flanders is known for being a strategic race, where race favorites have multiple opportunities of planning their decisive attacks. The tactical part of the race begins in the hilly region of the Flemish Ardens, where teams and riders often have to react to unpredictable developments and shadow favorites make anticipatory moves. The steep nature of these hills favors an aggressive, attacking style of riding, making the Tour of Flanders an attractive race for viewing audiences. The Palatin often rushes furiously over the narrow roads towards the climbs as teams try to position their captains in the front of the group. A climb is usually followed by a bigger road for some recovery, before taking the next small roads and climb again. As most hills are in rural locations or along small villages, the climbs themselves and the roads leading to them are often narrow causing the peloton to stretch into a long line and frequently break into smaller groups. Consequently, the best riders are forced to continually fight for space at the front of the pack. The race is therefore both renowned and notorious for its nervous course, with some favorites falling behind early in the race because of a crash or puncture, often unable to return to the front of the race, of the race, of the race, of the race, of the race. As a consequence, the element of luck is arguably one of the reasons why there has never been a rider able to win the Tour of Flanders more than three times, as even the best and greatest specialists of their time suffer bad luck or are foiled by unpredictable race circumstances occasionally. Since the race is restyling in 2012, the climbs of Oud-Quermont, Paterberg, and Koppenberg, just south of Oudenard, are the heart of the action. The Quermont is a long section of cobbles that starts sharply before gradually leveling out. It is the site where powerful riders often make the race-winning move, as Fabian Cancellara demonstrated in 2013, when he attacked with Peter Sagan on the lower slopes of Quermont before distancing the Slovak on the Paterberg. The Paterberg is the final climb of the day, where fans create a carnival-like atmosphere. It is a short but cobbled climb and viciously steep. After 245 km 152 mi of racing, it is generally an ultimate test of endurance and strength. The race culture and primal competition is an identifying factor of the Tour of Flanders. Two-time winner Peter Van Pietegem stated, It doesn't really matter where it goes. You have cobblestones and climbs and small roads, and that provides the character of the race. The climbs, the climbs, the short, sharp hills in the Flemish Ardens are a defining feature of the Rond and the places where spectators gather in vast numbers to see the race. In recent editions, 17 to 19 of these hills are included in the route, although the number is subject to change as some climbs are cut and others included almost every year. Each climb has its own characteristics that present different challenges to the riders. The Quermont is 2.2 km 1.4 mi but relatively shallow. The Paterberg is short and, at 20%, brutally steep. The Koppenberg in Melden is the steepest hill of the race at 22% with a bad, very uneven cobbled surface. Its road is also extremely narrow, and the high banking on either side turns it into a natural arena. Other famous climbs include the Eichenberg, Molenberg, and Tienberg. The Koppenberg has been dropped some years because it was deemed too difficult and too dangerous. Particularly when wet weather had made the cobbles slippery, it was hard for riders to take the steep slopes all the way riding. One rider falling could bring many others down and, in turn, halt those behind, who often had to shoulder their bikes and run up the remainder of the hill. In 1984, only two riders, Phil Anderson and Jan Rosk, got to the top on their bikes. In 1987, Danish rider Jesper Skibby slipped and fell on the slick cobbles before being run over by an official's car who tried to pass him. 
The climb was subsequently banned from the Tour of Flanders for the next 15 years. The Koppenberg returned in 2002, after its surface was repaved. It was briefly dropped in 2007, but was included again in 2008 after the city of Audenart had renovated it. It is now a permanent part of the course. Following cars are diverted before the foot of the climb to avoid chaos. In 2015, the 19 climbs were Climb Statistics, Kleewisberg, Buisestraat, Bergstraat, Kleewisbergen Ruin. Climbs 66 um from 27 um to 93. Um. Maximum 11%. First climbed 1955. Molenberg, Molenberg. Swalm. Swalm. Mzwalm. Mzwalm. Swalm. Swalm. Climbs 32 from 24 to 56 um. Maximum 17%. First climbed 1983. Out Quermont, Broek Schilderstraat, Kleewisbergen. Climbs 93 from 18 um to 111 um. Maximum 11%. First climbed 1974. Koppenberg, Steenget, Koppenberg, Audenard Melden. Climbs 60 form from 13 um to 77 um, maximum 25% at inside of bend, otherwise 22%. First climbed 1976. Tienberg, Tienberg, Marketel Etikhov. Climbs 45 um from 37 um to 82 um, maximum 18%. First climbed 1974. Bergter Steen, Steen Horbeck. Climbs 68 um from 32 um to 100 um, maximum 9%. First climbed 1957, Leberg, Leberg, Brakel Zigelsum. Climbs 39 um from 6 um to 9 um, maximum 15%. First climbed 1977, Berendries, Berendries, Brakel St. Maria Audenhove. Climbs 65 um from 33 um to 98 um, maximum 14%. First climbed 1983, Valkenberg, Valkenbergstraat, Brekel Litter Brekel. Climbs 53 from 45 um to 98 um, maximum 15%. First climbed 1959, Markaplor, Abdestraat, Outerbergstraat, Outerberg, Gerardsbergen. Climbs 77 um from 33 um to 110 um, maximum 20%. Percent. Percent, 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 percent. First climbed 1950. Bosberg, Kapelestraat, Gerardsbergen Moerbeck. Climbs Fortum from 65 um to 105 um. Maximum 11 percent. First climbed 1975. Tenbos, Oliphantstraat, Brakel. Climbs 28 um from 45 um to 73 um. Maximum 14%. First climbed 1997. Cobbled roads. Additional to the hills, the course traditionally includes a number of flat sections of cobbled roads. Recent additions included the Padestra 2400, Matterkirke 3000, Hockhoek 2000, and Mariaborostrat 2400. Only the Mariaborostrat comes in the race finale as it also comprises the climbs of the Steenbeek trees and the descent of the Stationsburg. Unlike the fearful sections of pave in Paris Raubaches, these roads are in excellent condition nowadays as they are part of a busy traffic network. They haven't been the decisive sites of the race for decades, but many purists of the Tour of Flanders want to keep them included because of their value as symbols of Flemish landscapes. Until the 1950s, the many dirt roads and cobbled roads were crucial sites in the race. Historian Tom Van Leer states that the Tour of Flanders had never set out to use poor roads. Cobblestoned roads were all that were available if the race were to be long enough. In the interwar period, Belgium's infrastructure was severely scarred by war and only the intercity roads were smooth. Roads were laid in cobblestones simply because it was the cheapest material at the time. After the Second World War, Belgium picked itself up from devastation and provinces began asphalting roads. When some of the iconic hills were asphalted, 
cycling fans and organizers were alarmed by the disappearance of cobbles. Organizer Van Wayneendale could no longer rely on many of the traditional roads as they were not difficult enough. His staff began searching for alleys and footpaths in maps and talked to people in bars who knew the local roads. It was either that or risk the race ending in a mass sprint. And that's the last thing organizers wanted, said Van Lair. Most back roads happened to be in the low hills between Rance and Gerardsbergen, the region that became the heart of the race. Over the years, the mileage of cobbles decreased, but the number of cobbled hills rose. The climb of the Paterberg was unpaved until 1986, when its cycling mad owner paved the road in cobbles because he wanted the race to pass by his house. The site was immediately included by race organizers and has become a fixture in the course. Several of the remaining cobbled roads in Flanders, including the Paterberg, are now protected sites and classified as part of Flemish cultural heritage. Weather, thir. As with most cycling races, weather conditions have a significant influence in the nature of the day's race. In bad weather conditions, the race is often a grueling contest, and the peloton is thinned out in the early parts of the race. In modern times, the edition of 1985 was hit by exceptionally stormy weather and only saw 24 finishers. When weather conditions are good, the teams of race favorites can control the race more easily and more riders are able to keep up with the pace. As the weather in April is highly unpredictable in Flanders, the race has repeatedly been affected by rough weather conditions. Founder Carol Van Wayneendale was keen on bad weather. He wanted the Tour of Flanders to be a symbol of Flemish culture and a metaphor of the country. As a journalist, he romanticized the race's protagonists in the image of the Flemish people of the time, hard-working, struggling men in a constant battle with the elements. His rhetoric, combined with often harsh conditions, contributed to the image of the Tour of Flanders as a character race where only the most headstrong and physically robust could win. Rider Characteristics Notable Editions 1919 Van Lerberg's speech. Gabe Conrad writes, the 1919 winner, Van Lerberg, showed up on the line in full racing attire, but, for some reason, without a bike, he borrowed one from the brother-in-law of another competitor, and, prior to the starting gun, threatened the pack that he was going to drop them all at their own front doors on the way to victory. Van Lerberg hadn't had 1939, Care's training ride, Carol Cares, the youngest man to win the World Road Championship, also won the Ronde in 1939. For him, it was training for Paris Raubakes. He drove to the Quermont Hill near Cleuisbergen, parked his car, then rode 40 km 25 miles to the start in Ghent. His plan was to ride round the course with his usual training partner, stop when he got to his car, then drive home. Knowing he wasn't riding the whole distance, Cares jumped clear of the field again as training and rode up the Quermont with a minute's lead. But his car wasn't there. He pressed on instead and won the race. His manager had driven the car away to save Cares from temptation. 1944, Van Steenbergen's Lucky Day Rick Van Steenbergen said, When I turned pro, I couldn't ride it straight away. There were three categories of rider, road riders A, road riders B, and track riders. I was registered with the Federation as a track rider. At first they wouldn't let me ride the national championship. But Gene Van Buggenhout, the manager, got me reclassified on... Van Steenbergen was in the break when several riders fell on the cinder track to the track in Ghent. Van Steenbergen rode round the fallen and won. Next year... He decided not to ride. Van Wayneendale was offended. But Van Steenbergen had realized why he'd turned pro, to make a living. I could probably win more money elsewhere, he said. The Tour of Flanders didn't have the attraction that it does now, especially not internationally. 1946, Van Steenbergen again, Jen again. Van Steenbergen returned in 1946 and won again. He said that was one of my best wins ever. I could do whatever I liked, 
ride better than anyone. In the end I was with Breek Scott and an Kel 1951, Magny's Festival Fiorenzo Magni, a rare Italian in Belgian classics, won so many intermediate prizes during his long solo flight that they would have bought him a house sea above. He was one of nine to escape the field at Ingelmunster. The others cracked one by one until Magny was alone by Strape in the point where he made his winning move the previous year. He rode the last 75 km 47 mile alone to win the Ronde for the third successive year. Magny won by almost eight minutes and the first five finishers were foreigners. 1961, Simpson vs. de Philippines. Such a gale blew in 1961 that the banner over the finish line blew down. The British rider Tom Simpson was clear with the better-known Italian champion, Nino de Filippis. Simpson, the weaker sprinter, accelerated for the line with a kilometer to go. It was too far and de Filippis came past him as he weakened. Simpson struggled to stay with him and was delighted when the Italian began freewheeling just before the finish. De Filippis said he didn't know where the finish was because the banner had blown down, but the two riders had already covered two previous laps of the finishing circuit. For the same reason, the Italian protest that the line on the road was clearly marked also failed. De Filippis asked Simpson to agree to a tie, saying no Italian had won a classic since 1953. Simpson said, I replied that an Englishman had not won one since 1896. 1969, Merckx Panache, Panache. Eddie Merckx dominated world racing in both classics and stage races but couldn't win the Ronde. By 1969, he had not only frustration to contend with but rising resentment of other riders unhappy that he won so many races. He attacked early and half the field never saw him again. The other half was reduced with each successive attack until he got clear alone. The chase was furious but ineffective, and Merckx won by more than five and a half minutes over Felis Gimondi, and more than eight minutes on the rest. The Ronde remained an unhappy race for him. It was another six years before he won again. 1985, Van der Raarden in the storm. Bad weather has often hit the Ronde. In 1985, a storm broke in the second half of the race, of the race. The weather was so bad that only 24 made it to the finish. The race historian Rick Van Willeghem said, It was a legendary ronde, one which wrote sport with a capital S. It was as cold as Siberia all day and the rain fell in Torrance Regent at Papenstellen. In this apocalyptic background, Eric van der Raarden got back to the front after looking beaten to ride 20 km 12 mai at the head of the race alone. Impressive. 1987 Skibby on the Koppenberg. The danger of the Ron's narrow and badly surfaced hills came close to tragedy when Danish rider Jesper Skibby was hit from behind by an official's car and fell onto a roadside bank, still strapped into his pedals. The official's car then tried to pass him and ran over Skibby's back wheel, narrowly missing his leg. The race official continued to the finish, where he was met by angry spectators throwing mud, cups, and stones at his car. The incident overshadowed the victory of Claude Criquillion, the first French-speaking Belgian winner of the Tour of Flanders. Opinions Only those who are in top condition can say that the Ronde is not hard. For everyone else, it's the way of the cross. Andrea Taffefi I told the organizers it was to race but a war game. It's hard to explain what the Koppenberg means to a racing cyclist. Instead of being a race, it's a lottery. Only the first five or six riders have any chance. The rest fall off or scramble up as best they can. What on earth have we done to send us to hell now? Bernard Hinault. As a Belgian, winning Flanders for the first time is far more important than wearing the Mela John yellow jersey in the Tour, Johan Musio. Looking back, you get a bit nostalgic. But from a competitive point of view, Flanders was one of the most horrible races to ride, but one of the greatest races to win. Sean Kelly, Sean Kelly, Sean Kelly, Sean Kelly, Sean Kelly. 
many great names of Flemish cycling live on the route of the race. This closeness doesn't exist in any other country. That's what gives our identity. Nico Matten. These days you see all the riders, their life is well known, before you saw only the last two hours on television. Now, the direct coverage starts before the race has started, and the legend that surrounded riders created in people's imagination no longer exists. When everything is too realistic, you lose the legend. Mark Sar The Tour of Flanders is unlike any other bike race in the world. Winners Multiple winners Wins per country Winners of the Cobbled Classics double on 12 occasions, the Tour of Flanders and Paris Raubex had the same winner in the same year. Tom Boonen and Fabian Cancellara are the only riders who have achieved this double twice. Records and Statistics The longest Tour of Flanders was its first running in 1913. The shortest Tour of Flanders was the wartime edition of 1941, 198 km 123 mi. The fastest edition was in 2001, won by Italian Gianluca Bortolami, 43.6 km slash H27.1 MPH average. The slowest edition was in 1923, won by Swiss Airy Suter, 26.2 km slash H16.3 MPH average. The smallest margin between the winner and runner-up was in 1994, when Gianni Bogno beat Johan Musio by 7mm 0.28 in in a sprint. The largest margin between the winner and runner-up was in 1919, when Henry van Lerberg held a 14-minute lead over the first chasing group. The largest post-war margin between the winner and runner-up was in 1969, when Eddie Merckx won by a margin of 5 minutes 36 seconds, over second place finisher Felis Gimondi. In 1951, Fiorenzo Magni won by 5 minutes 35 seconds Bernard Gauthier. The youngest winner was Rick Van Steenbergen in 1944 at 19 years and 206 days. The oldest winner was Andre TCH Mill in 2000 at 37 years and 71 days. The Tour of Flanders attracts 600.0 minus 800.0 spectators along the road annually, on a total Flemish population of 6.5 million. The record for most participations is held by Belgian Breek Scott, who participated 20 consecutive times from 1940 to 1959, and finished 16 times with 8 podium places, and 2 victories in 1942 and 1948. American George Hincapie holds the record of most finishes, with 17 finishes in 17 races. Six men share the record of victories, with three each. Achille Bice won in 1940, 1941, and 1943. Italian Fiorenzo Magni won in 1949, 1950, 1951. Eric Lemon won in 1970, 1972, and 1973. Johan Musio won. The nation with the most victories is Belgium 69. Seven riders have won two years in a row Romain Jaisels, Achille Bice, Fiorenzo Magni, Eric Lemon, Tom Boonen, Stein de Volder, and Fabian Cancellara. Only one rider, Fiorenzo Magni, won three consecutive victories. Two riders achieved a record eight podium finishes. Breek Scott twice first, twice second, four times third, and Johan Musio three times first, three times second, twice third. Sean Kelly and Leif Host have the most second places without ever winning the Tour of Flanders, each finishing second on three occasions. Five riders won the race in the rainbow jersey as world champions, Lewis and Bobbitt in 1955, Rick Van Louis in 1962, Eddie Merckx in 1975. Tour of Flanders for Women Since 2004 there is a Women's Tour of Flanders Dutch. It is part of the UCI Women's World Tour and is considered one of the most prestigious events in women's cycling. From 2004 to 2011 the race ran over a 115 km 71 my course which started in Oudenaert and finished in Meerbeek with the last 55 km 34 my identical to the men's race. 
Since 2012, the race starts and finishes in Audenard. It is 155 km 96 mi and has a similar finale as the men's tour of Flanders, with many of the same hills, except for the Koppenberg. In 2018, the race features 12 climbs, including the Marvanger Rartsbergen, Oud Quermont, Paterberg, and three long flat cobbled sectors. The final 35 km 22 mi including Cruisberg, Oud Quermont, and Paterberg, are identical to the men's finale. Dutch rider Merge and Melcher's Van Papel and Germany's Judith aren't currently hold the record with two wins. Experienced Center The Centrum Rond van Vlaanderen Tour of Flanders Center is an interactive cycling-themed experience center and museum in Oudenaar devoted to the Tour of Flanders. It opened in 2003 with an extensive array of audiovisual material from old television and radio broadcasts. Visitors are able to experience a ride on a cobbled road or experience the Quermont climb in a virtual contest with stars like Peter Van Pietegem. The center's founder and director is former sports journalist and writer Rick Van Wallegem. The museum curator is 1970s cycling icon Freddie Mertens, who provides guided tours. The center is located on Audenard's city square, close to the finish of the Tour of Flanders, relocated to Audenard in 2012. There is also a brasserie and a museum shop. Cyclosportive Since 1999, there is a Tour of Flanders cyclosportive for non-professionals called We Ride Flanders, organized on the day before the professional event. The longest route is 230 km 140 mi starting in Antwerp, but there are three shorter routes of 174 km 108 mi, 140 km 87 mi, or 74 km 46 mi, which all start and finish in Audenard. Because of its growing success, the number of participants has been restricted to 16,000 in order to secure riders' safety on the roads. Tickets are usually sold out months before the race. 60% of participants are non-Belgians.